I bought this for Joe and Paul as a gift. It's the um, survival first aid kits from Australia. They're exceptional. So the thing is that they have mole strapping, webbing on the back. And that is what, there you go, that's yours. See, wow. complete with mole. Yeah. Ready for uh, mounting on the back door. Andrew, thank you so much. That's oh, my pleasure. That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh man. Perfect place for it. I'm Andrew St. Pierre White, explorer, overlander and broadcaster with over 40 years driving 4x4s in association with the Overland Workshop online training for overlanders. During all this mayhem, Paul and I have got to find some time to sit down and talk about the interior camper build. Remember, this is a budget build. So, <clears throat> we're not skimping on the mechanical work, we're doing it properly and sharing with you what the things that must be done and the other things that we have a choice of doing. It has to be a very reliable vehicle. That's the bottom line. For me, personally, that is mandatory because I'm expecting to do some very ambitious trips. But in terms of the camper, do I fit a rooftop tent? No, I'm not fitting a rooftop tent into a troop carrier, okay? Am I going to do a roof conversion like the Alucab Hercules or the ELO Innovations Kronos? They're both fantastic. No, not fitting either of those. There is a third one being developed and designed now that I've heard about. I have seen nothing. I just heard about it. But I'm also not going to fit that one. Certainly not at this stage, not until I've seen it. So my idea is, because this is a budget build, not do a roof conversion of any kind, but prepare for a possible roof conversion later and build the troop carrier as it is with no major conversion into a really practical overland camper. Recorded before we started the mechanical overhaul of the Land Cruiser, I allowed Paul a little time to show off his handiwork. This, in a nutshell, is what he's offering to build for me. In the front, we fit the tucker. I really do like the tucker. Yes, you I developed that yes, many years ago with yes. them. And so we fitted this. Yes. Extra speaker pods, um, little speaker pods there. We upgrade the radio to something a bit better. Um, a lockable box or a, or a fridge between the seats. Seat covers, you've got plenty of choice. A lot of clients are fitting the Shielman seats. Yes. There's an agent in Namibia. Yeah. So we, we We're going to talk about seats. that. We're going to talk about Shielman seats because those seats are my. 63-year-old chassis doesn't like Toyota seats. <laughs> you want to try those? So, yeah, basically, on that, this is these are the, the these, these are the uh, Explore. Yeah. I've got them. They're brilliant. They're so beautifully made, aren't they? They are really nicely oh, made. I must yeah. credit these guys for a great product. Yeah. I mean, it's, so our clients import them, okay. and we fit them. Most okay. of our clients like the access. To me, it's the weakness of the troopy. Yeah. Access, side access. Yeah, side access. Put those in, yeah. sorted. Absolutely. With the two water tanks, so you fill the two water tanks each side, so you can actually okay. fill each side. Then you've got this water tank of 25 liters, which feeds a tap on the back bumper. I love it. Okay. And then your tanks, you can isolate your tanks, so you can keep these separate, or you can open a tap and it drops down into the bottom tank. From the bottom tank, that's where your water gets pulled up through the pump for your um, your hot water system and then we purify our water using a lifesaver. So because we've, we've, we've fitted the, the Gobi X rear bumper, yes. to me it's one of the finest bumpers. It is. It's, it absolutely is. It's, it's tested in Africa. Uh, it really does stand the test of time. They've really engineered it well. Uh, as long as you service it regularly, you look after the opening, uh, it, it serves well. You've got a gadget arm here which works quite well combination lock so you can't steal stuff. Um, this was obviously the bolts came out with the original carrier for the wheel. So use it for something. What is this? It's um, the high lift jack plate. But the high lift jack is there? Yeah, but you take the plate off, it's right underneath the base plate. Okay, we still got the um, system here. Okay, again it's slightly different layout, the cafeteria, a couple of different mugs but it's very accessible. The molly plate system, storage and drawers, four drawers, and the last unit you access from the top. 
here we've actually got a system that you pull out Coleman cooker and you've got your extra drawer if I come around here so now I've got quite a lot of space here I can chop here, I can cook here and I've got access to to this here so beautiful, it's really, really nice. And then here we've got two front runner seats, two chairs, which we fit in there. That's a standard drawer, pulls out. Molly on the side here. Two more drawers and your lifesaver is tucked in at the bottom there, which you literally will pull out and bring it to here and use it. So can we, when we discuss my build, have this vehicle to... Yeah, I've got two other vehicles. That, that would be so good because yeah. I'm seeing so much here that I absolutely love yeah. and a few things that I wouldn't do, but yeah. um, but the but the principles here are fantastic. I think they're absolutely got a, One of the vehicles which I'll show you where we've got, we put um, bamboo on the tops here and then we've got a system that you can actually fill here. It actually lays in lays on the top here and you lift it and fill it. So That's what I want. Here. Yeah. That's part of the thing, <laughs> yes. That's, that was the question I had in my head yeah. right now. Yeah. That's, so that, can, that would be, that, that would be, that yeah. well. So the idea is then to turn uh, this into that. Good morning. Paul and I are getting together to discuss the interior camper build layout of my Africa troop carrier. Now, Paul and I see things alike on so many things when it comes to overlanding, but not everything. Paul builds vehicles in Cape Town for clients that live all over the world, mostly land cruisers and many of those troop carriers. Enough troop carriers that he has designed and created a standard interior fit out that can be tweaked and adapted for individual clients. But it's a standard layout. So it's my job now to cast aside my troopy prejudices and let Paul do his magic. But I say that, I'll let him do that after I have explained my mission. I do have quite a specific mission. My mission might be the distance of my trips, which is going to be very long. How long am I going to be on the open road? For me, probably not more than two months, but certainly long distance. Africa and all of the challenges that Africa has to, you know, present overland travelers. And certain other things that I absolutely love about my own troop carrier that I want to bring into whatever Paul builds in Cape Town. But I'm not asking him to build me a custom build. I'm asking him, because his standard product on first impression is very impressive. I'm going to say to Paul, like his clients would, I have some ideas, I have a mission, help me fulfill that mission based on your standard fitting design. So now I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get Paul to explain to you the difference between custom and not custom. So Andrew, really when you're looking at custom and not custom, there is quite a significant difference. You know, when someone comes to me and they want a custom build, the amount of time that I invest in creating the designs with them, understanding what they want, that's then got to be trans transpired to the guy who's going to build the car. And that's got to be interpreted because there's an expectation. And that expectation that someone has is their dream and they are looking to create this beautiful vehicle they've been thinking about, dreaming about, they've looked through Instagram, they've got all the pictures, got all the ideas and they want all those ideas crammed into one vehicle. And I find that that often leaves a lot of challenges because for firstly none of it's tested. So when you look at we're doing a custom build on a vehicle it is all brand new. It's like building a house for the first time, it's brand new. You know, Toyota's success, when I look at the Land Cruiser, they ironed out the faults over time. They've got their weaknesses, they've got their shortcomings, but it's a solid, reliable, 
well-tested platform that many of us trust to take us in the remote parts of the world. It's not a custom vehicle. You get there, it's well tested. And likewise, when you're building a vehicle where you've gone and sat down and worked out what products can work, you take away the guessing. And that's really where I'm trying to come from. You know, you build a product, you prototype it, you test it, you get feedback from clients, you tweak it, and it becomes a really good, successful product. Now, most of the time when you look at things that are built, products that are made, they're probably 90% of what you'd like, and then you'd like to make your own little tweaks. You'd like to put your own stamp of approval on it, and that's great, but you can do that in so many ways. For me, if I can sit down with a client and we can actually look at the vehicle that they want, utilize products that are available to build their vehicle, designs that we know have been tested, it's gonna be more successful. Because for one, we can see exactly what we've got, they can climb in, feel it, touch it, look at it. So that takes away a lot of the um, expectation that they don't know. They don't know what they don't know because they haven't seen it and we haven't built it. So we're trying to remove that, which means that everyone's job becomes much better. The quality of work can be refined, it's been twisted, tested, it's been tweaked. So that takes a lot of problems out of it. Because often when you've done a custom build on a vehicle, it takes two or three trips to sort out the niggles, the rattles, the weaknesses. And that's a challenge. No one wants that. So going to the next step, it's really important, as Andrew mentioned, the mission. The mission. What is your dream? How do you look at using your vehicle? Now for someone like Andrew, he's done thousands of miles. He's traveled many parts of the world. He's done expeditions more than most people. And I'd like to think that he knows exactly what he wants. But coming now, sitting down, we're building a vehicle for Africa. So there's some differences. There's some considerations to look at. So my role to manage his expectations, to make sure that when the vehicle's finished, he doesn't come and look at me and say, hey, Paul, that's not what I want. You really didn't understand the brief. And I'm sorry, but it's not going to work. That's not what I want. I want to make sure that, that we are clear, understood what he wants, what he needs, and what we can build are the three criteria we're going to look at. So I, if I understand Andrew's mission, what he would like to have, what we can tweak in, there are going to be certain compromises. And I think that is the important part. You look at it and you weigh it up and say, well, if I get that and I don't quite get that, is that going to work for me? And can it work for me? And it's been tested, so if 10 other people like it, then maybe it's not a bad option. So watch us as we develop what I believe will be a great vehicle for Andrew in Africa. Hello, everybody. Welcome to, you are literally eavesdropping. <laughs> Paul and I are discussing the ideas for the interior camping build. And really, we're just rolling camera, we're going to have a discussion. This is the actual discussion. We're not going to promote any products, we're not going to promote any ideas, we're just going to have a discussion on what Paul's going to pull for me. Yeah, I think it's important. You know, I want to know more about what was key in your last build yeah. that you really yeah. liked. You know, there some, there'd be some things that you like because of how you use the vehicle. Absolutely. Uh, you know, okay, I think... you're editing or... You know, that's Absolutely. Key. So, my mission, let me, let's go my mission. Okay. You know that I do long trips. It's obviously specific to Africa, that's the build. And I'm typically two of us, sometimes one, sometimes I do solo, solo trips. So both. And uh, I'm not big on cooking, so the cooking <laughs> has to be simple, straightforward. Okay, so that we're not going to spend a lot of time on getting all of the cooking stuff done because I just don't do much cooking. But I do carry a lot of camera equipment. I need access to camera equipment, yeah. easy access to camera equipment, and um, and longest trip probably not more than two months. Two months. Two months is a good. It's a good uh, length of time to travel. My longest ever trip was 66 days. Yeah. I can't see myself being on the road for longer than that, but you never know. But anyway. Yeah. What I loved about what I love about my, my current Aussie Troopy more than any other Troopy that I've owned is the fact that I can chill. <laughs> I can just uh, nice spot. I might not be camping there. Yeah. I might just be stopped there. 
and I can climb in the back, I can chill without having to, I don't, because we're still going to decide what we're going to do with the rooftop tent, yeah. so we should yeah. probably add here that... It's going to be a phased approach, I think initially yeah. we talked about you using the vehicle without the roof conversion. Exactly. And I think it's a good thing to consider because the roof's fairly high. But, you know, obviously it's not as good as having this up, like we've spoken here, but I for the start, to try that, yes. and then use it, and then you come back mm. with, let's do the roof and what you want. So phase one, no roof, we've yeah. decided on that. But that, you see, it's a high enough roof, yeah. being a van, that you can actually crawl around in the back and easily sleep in the back. So my idea was this, when I'm on my own, I'm sleeping in the back, yeah. good. I'm not, yeah pitching a tent at all. I'm comfortable in the back. Okay, so I need a reasonable width and obviously length. Yeah. Okay, to sleep in the back mattress. When I'm traveling with Gwyn, I'm putting a ground tent. Mm, good. Not a rooftop tent. There's nothing wrong with the ground tent. In fact, the ground tent I like is actually really tents. nice. I actually. And there's some great products out there where you know you can get a tent up quickly and yes. you've got space. And yes. I think the big thing with the ground tent is can you put it up quickly? And you take it down, it doesn't give you enough space in the, in the tent. And if you needed to get out of inclement weather, how does that work? You know? Yes. So, yeah, it's so some great I've, products. I've got a couple of products in mind that'll fulfill that. Mm. Yeah. But in terms of the back, this chill factor mm. is a climb back. Now, what do I need around me? Uh, do I need to access my fridge from inside? Yeah, maybe, but it's not a priority. Because yeah. most of my cooking just happens outside. I don't like yeah. cooking inside. Yeah. You're not going to make a steak in there. <laughs> well, you know, I think that's the thing. You know, traditionally vehicles like this were built out of Europe. That was the traditional build. And of course, Europe has very different needs yes. for Africa. Yes. So living in the vehicle was a high priority. So having your basin inside and having everything. So you could be out of the really rough weather and you were completely confined in the vehicle. We live in Africa, and Africa, 90%, 95% of the time, you're actually outside because that's where you want to be. It's yeah. great. 5% yeah. you've got some rain and you're climbing in, or you've got some animals around and you yeah. need to be confined. So with that in mind, and you're cooking outside, and it's simple, because you know me, it's got to be simple, safe and reliable. Yes. Okay, so we're not compromised. Those are, no. for me, values Those, that that's you and I have shared share. many of yeah. So, So that's not even a debate. And I like that because that's often something I've got to get through to people and go, it's got to be simple, safe and reliable. So the reliability we've taken care of with the mechanical work. The simplicity is important because when you're by yourself and you've driven a whole long day and you've still got to do a whole lot of stuff around camp, it becomes painful. Yes. So to set up your camp in a simple, easy way when you're tired, you've done a long drive, you've got hours of editing to do, whatever you've got, yes, that's key. So. With that in mind, mm. I want to use the Egon Water Hub yeah. because of the instant hot water, mixed water system, that it is absolutely instant and there's no, no water wastage. And I obviously want to promote the product, but <laughs> yeah. and you haven't fitted one in a vehicle yet. Uh, DC we fitted Hub, you're one in, in, in one of our client vehicles. Oh, yes. you did? Yes. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah, yeah. So you're familiar with the Water Hub. Oh, yeah. The DC Hub, you're familiar with. Yes. You've, you've fitted yes. that. No, so, great product. obviously. So, um, so that the idea of a shower, a quick shower for me, in my, at my age, I've got more and more needy when it comes to needing a shower in the oh, evening, and it's got to be fast, quick, blah, blah, blah. The hot water, the heating of water system, you've got some different ideas, and I'm very yeah. interested in listening to those. And so that's always something, because, you know, it goes from fitting a system, a number of systems, okay, to uh, my favorite is a pump-up insecticide-type bottle, which you can throw some warm water in and you can modify the nozzle. It's like a little shower. And I'll stand there and I'll have a shower. I've done that it's too. It's as simple as anything. Yes. I'm not saying that's what, you know, as we I get older you're going, anymore. you know what, I'd like some. I don't want that anymore. You've done it. I've done it. And I've been think, there. So. Again, when people are looking at some of those things, you're going, well, you can do that simply. But there are a lot of options on the market when it comes to heating water, purifying water. And those are the key things you look at. You know, water. Water is, a, is an element. You know, we, we've looked at in our designs. How do we gain the most amount of space in this vehicle? Well, you take the water out of the vehicle. 
in a sense that you're not occupying the living space. Now you've got tanks. some really, really interesting, I haven't actually seen them, but you've got some <laughs> very interesting Top water secret. ideas. <laughs> Top secret water ideas. Yeah. So we're going to definitely go with that because that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, and I think, you know, what, what the concepts behind building these troopies in conjunction with a company who really does amazing work, yes. a guy who's a very talented man, and a good friend of mine, yes. he really has understood alongside the knowledge and experience. So together we've looked at and said, what can we build that we can replicate, that we can properly test, and we absolutely know it's going to work for 90% 90, 90 of what most people should need. Yes. Okay. That's why With I a say, few tweaks. That's why I say we are, you are going to build a vehicle based on a standard layout yeah. with tweaks. Yeah. And, the, and the, the process behind that was, was really interesting. Custom work, you start off, you've got to invest a lot of time in drawings, which are not easy, or, and often they're not CAD drawings because it takes a lot of time and effort and mm. it's expensive. So you're doing hand drawings and you're trying to get an idea and the guy's going to much like figure out what he needs to do and build something. And of course, the expectation of what you want and what's delivered can vary and yeah. be interpreted in different ways. Yes. When you've sat down and you've built a product and you've designed it from nothing up, you have a blank canvas. You can basically look and say, we're building the product with certain parameters in mind. Okay, and one of the parameters was how can we really use the space very efficiently? And the, one of the first things was to remove the water out of the living area. Yeah. So it's gone into the cavities and the yeah. side walls and under the, underneath. Yeah. That gave us a lot more space. The next was to look at how do we simplify the electrical system using top quality products and making sure that we could put it in a place where it's simple, easy to get. So we designed a box, which became our electrical box. Okay. Everything is bolted into the box. Right. We built our own wiring loop. Yes. So basically, everything is like plug and play. Yes. So you start off, if you imagine your troopy. So we're going to build your troopy after we've closed all the holes up <laughs> <laughs> and after we've insulated the floor. Yeah. We put a floor down. Yeah. The foundation. You've yeah. done it in all your troopies and we'll do it again. That floor fixes to the floor of the vehicle. Whatever we bolt on that must be able to bolt out without taking the floor out quickly. Because if you have a smash on the side, you have a problem with a water tank, you have something you need to get access to, you don't want someone to spend days costing you a lot of money to Just remove this unit yeah. mm. because you dropped something very valuable behind it or there's a problem or you need to access it. So that was part of the thought process. Okay. Can it be removed and yeah. put back easily? Yeah. Everything needs a home. As I often say to people, when, you, when you're looking at what you're going to take, there's the equipment you're going to take, and you're going to go, right, there's my list. And it doesn't help to build your truck and then go, oh, well, I've got all this kit now. My stove is this big, but I haven't got a place to put it. So we thought of, where will everything have a home? Where can we put everything? So if I'm going to change a spare wheel, and I can flip my driver's seat forward, and we've got a canvas bag made up, it's got a jack and high-vis vest and warning triangles, everything you need to change your wheel. Behind you your driver's seat. Behind your driver's seat. Perfect because place. the driver's going to get out, you, Perfect by place. yourself. Yeah. What it's doing, it's making sure that you limit your exposure to vulnerability. You're in Africa, you might be in line country, you don't want to open up your whole car, start digging stuff out and, and you get some help from the monkeys and the lions around and it's, it's dangerous. Um, so, so really what you're looking at is saying, how are we going to use our equipment, where are we going to put it, and how are we going to access it? And that's key. So, you know, the troopy's got two doors at the back and two doors at the front, and there's some great gullwing options, yeah. which yeah. I know we both like, yes. which gives better access, yeah. and gives more air, it makes yeah. it, and you spoke about comfort. Yeah. So in your comfort, it's nice to, when you're sitting inside, because it's hot and you don't want to deploy a whole awning and everything, it's nice to be able to get air through the vehicle. Absolutely. That's so to be open so up nice. those yeah. gull wings and get Absolutely. air through, yes. I imagine it's going to give you a lot more comfort. Yes. And you, I know. And we'll discuss the details of what and which Absolutely. and where they yeah. should go. Yeah. But we'll do that. I'm going to need, I'm going to need you to help me say, okay, get these gull wings, get these three or these two. Yeah. Those sort of those you sort of I mean? ideas so on what we're looking at for products. 
is, is sort of phase two. I think the important part right now is to understand that we meet your needs. Yeah. So, so you've spoken about comfort, yeah. um, having a comfortable cushion to sit on, yeah. that's important yeah. if you're going to spend a few hours. Getting the height of how you work with yes. your laptop inside here is quite important. Are your heights interchangeable? Or we, we, can, we can adjust certain heights. Oh, you can? Okay. Because it's on a CAD program. So all our stuff is drawn out by CAD. It gets yeah. laser cut, powder coated, bolted together, fit. Okay. So, you know, in a sense, some of the parameters, we've standardized on sort of like the, the passenger side here. It's, it's pretty standard for what we have, but if we had to raise it slightly or lower it slightly, um, there's a small cost for that change in the drawings. Right. And of course, then it happens and it can be done. Right. But ask me to redesign the whole thing? No. Not interesting. No, I'm not because, going to do that. Because not that's the not the point. No, okay, the point so is saying we've given the thought, yeah. but to meet your needs. So if you're sitting here and you're saying, well, I'm going to sit for long hours editing. I need my computer to be at the right height. Or I need something. I need plug points at this particular point. Yeah. That's a small thing to add. Yeah. It's that comes in the 10% of what yeah. Andrew needs to make his car really usable and functional. Yeah. Yeah. But the basic functionality you know, okay. um, of what you can use. So if you could stand here and open this up and we have a jet boiler, a coffee station right. here and make yourself a coffee, yeah. that's function. Okay. What else is important to you that you think you need? I uh, mentioned shower, yeah. okay, chill inside. Yeah. Sleeping, uh, access, sleeping in here. Sleeping in here, one person, yeah. sleeping in here and then access to my kitchen utensils while sitting outside. I don't want to have to climb inside to get yeah. my kitchen general stuff. Yeah. And I have, for example, a very, very long drawer and it's got very basic food. The food stuffs that I will need almost every single time I sure. will cook will be in that drawer. Yeah. Then I'm saying, okay, I'm going to do some uh, a pasta tonight. I don't mind going to get the pasta, sure. but I mind going to get the sugar for the my and the for sugar and all, all of the things that I'm using all the time yeah. have near the end yeah. or accessible from standing right here and those things that I don't need I don't mind climbing inside and getting. So exactly that and, and I look at this as a, this is a very important area and, and I really love it when the women get involved and we've got some ladies who we build vehicles for who've given us fantastic feedback, great ideas. So we've built on this new style of design about eight and we've got a, a nice booking list for more to build on these troopies. Everyone that's been built, we set the clients down uh, and we ask them for feedback because they're little tweaks that, that they come up with from using it that we haven't found. And the ladies come up with some amazing ideas. So that for us is, this kitchen so area I is really a, important. So I have a question about this kitchen area. I have built a similar thing to this. It has a, an induction cooker and a stove type of cooker is irrelevant but it has the stove there and we never use it here and the reason why we never use it here we always move it to the side I've got a kitchen box which we open and on the kitchen as it open there's a light that spreads down and I've got my cutlery and stuff and basic stuff in the kitchen thing and that's where I make my coffee the max tax table because it's this high you can cook on it without hurting your back yeah that down there yeah it's too low so you look so, for flexibility. So well. what is important to me is that I, I can't cook at this. Yeah. Gwen is just going to say, forget it, because she has, like many people no. our age, and it's not challenges with our backs. backs yeah. And she does that, and she's a cripple the next day. Yeah. So the Max Trax table is the perfect That's height. Nice. Light, high yeah. table, and we move, the, we move the, 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 cooker. Uh, the cooker onto that table. And I also found that if somebody is cooking here, because this is a little van that <laughs> doesn't open very far, you're restricted. You're restricted. The orifice is quite small, and if you're cooking here, you're blocking it. So I, we found with our troopies that we actually prefer cooking left or right. It's not really relevant. Mm. It'll be relevant once the interior is built, but at sure. the moment it's not. So we've got our fridge and cooker on the right hand side which works quite help. well mm. if we move it over to the left and have the awning on the left. We do that we because specifically in Africa you're driving on the left hand side of the road. So if yes. you were to pull off on the side of the road, yes. 
um, access to your fridge yeah. from the off side, yes. not the car side, yes. because you're passing yes. you're safer. So that's, that's the yeah. thinking, and also the driver can, if you're by yourself, you can lean across and you can get into your fridge. Or okay, your that's fridge. never been an issue for it's me not a big because thing. I've got that little console yeah. fridge, and I, my argument to that is yes, it makes it makes complete logical sense, but. If I'm going to pull off the road, I'm going to pull off the road. I am not going to stand next to the road and open my fridge. Forget it. I I'm, think, I think you that's know true. You know, you, so, and that's where you have that way you travel. Yeah. Some people pull off the road and we have a coffee station and a bag. And we go, just take your bag and walk off and go and do it. You know? So, again, those yeah. are the little nuances. Yeah. You travel differently to them, yeah. to me, to yeah. all that. And yeah. it's not right or wrong, it's just different. It's just different. Um, I think what we look at and say, and what we, when we're building a vehicle, is you try to maximize again the space and the layout. Now how you cook, I think that's great. The more flexibility you can have in your layout, your vehicle and, and that. So if you had a cooker that was here, and you didn't want to cook here, and you could lift it and put it on the, on the Max Trax table, which and is that, what we would and do. And that's great. We and would, some people prefer that. to have this as their kitchen <coughs> area. But if you've got flexibility, it doesn't matter. So in our trucks, we don't put basins in. We don't build a basin in these trucks. Why? Because in Africa, you really don't need them. And if you I, did... I would never build a basin inside the car. Yeah. I don't, it's not wrong. It's, it's a nice feature to have. Yeah. And some people really love it. Yeah. For us, it's like, take a collapsible basin if that's how you're going to use it. In a small confined space, in a room that's small, you never go with your furniture right up to the roof because you make the room even, room even smaller. Okay? In a small space like this, our whole aim is to, can we keep everything as low down as possible, maximizing the storage space? But because remember, you maximize the air, which you've got, you've feels, got air, you've got, yeah, you've got that is. comfy that yes. you're looking for, yes. you can open up gull wings, you can get air through. And how much space do you really need? How much kit do you really need to take? You've got spares? Do you remember the canning stock yeah. in my VA trip carrier? We carried food and everything for four weeks. Yeah. We had spare space. We had too much. We had loads of space, plenty. We had too, actually too much space. So it was, it was, it was a great, good access, yeah. but yeah, that's good. actually overkill when it comes to storage space because we'd gone up. We'd gone, we'd up. gone up too high on the right hand side. Yeah. You know? But so I think you know that, that's all. It's, it's, a, it's a learning and lessons, and it's still not wrong to have done that because you had the extra space. What I felt and found is you need to sit, be able to sit comfortably. So there's a certain height that your leg's going to be yeah. when you sit, and to have a cushion that's comfortable, yeah. and that's got to be work for an average of people. That is the standard height you're using. Yeah, we we put a uh, 50 mil cushion on top. Okay, and if someone comes to us and said, you know what? I'm a little bit shorter and I really, it's just uncomfortable, then we'll drop it slightly. Okay, it's not, so that's not the issue there. But the okay. important part is can you sit there comfortably? Yes. And remember, you're not sitting, you'd be different because you would probably edit in the car more than you would outside. Yes. Because it's safer. Um, so you'd spend more time. So to get that right for you and your height and sitting comfortably is actually more important than for most people who would probably use it a much smaller amount of time. Got it. If you're going to take this vehicle and you're going to go to South America, different. You're going to be living more in the car. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's about can you adapt it? You know? okay. Have you got a means to heat your hot water? Have you got a means to purify your water? Um, have you got enough water? Okay. Currently we have capacity for 120 litres. 100 litres in tanks and 20 litres in a 20 yeah. litre can. More than enough for my trips. I just know how much water I use. I think it's more than it, enough even, for most people. It is. I, know, when you think I've got 100 now, 110 now, and I, I've never got to the stage where I've been worried about water. Yeah. People so, carry too much water, Yeah. but you need the flexibility to go, I don't need to carry that weight, so don't carry it. So just not fill a tank. So the way we've designed the tanks is they're three separate tanks. You could leave one empty. Yeah. You could leave the two side ones empty and just fill the bottom. Yeah. Carry the weight you need to carry. You don't stress the vehicle as much. And that's knowing where you're traveling, how you're traveling, yeah, how yeah. long, all yeah, that. Yeah. I like Same with that food. idea of the different tanks that you can just say, oh, I only need this for this trip, just fill it up and just use that one tank. Yeah. And that's that. That's a so nice it's, it's, it's giving that flexibility. And again, it's, it's a, I think it's building too much capacity. You know, people, oh, I need the biggest tank I can fit. Well, you know, on canning, I mean, you know, we had the two 90 litre tanks. I think we had two cans of fuel. Uh, we had a 75 on board. 
75 and we on had board a 20 and, the and a, uh, no. No, we had the 290s. You're thinking about the 290 fuel tanks? Yes, the fuel, I'm talking about. Are oh, you talking about fuel? Yeah, yeah. 290s plus a 20? Plus a 20. And we met. Okay. Okay. So that's one of the few places in the world where you, that range is needed. Yeah. Few. Yeah. Yet, often people put too much, too big a tank, extra weight, losing space. So it's a case of balancing out. If it's a petrol vehicle, yes, you want that capacity. Drinks fuel. And we were, you were talking earlier about the, you know, the mission, 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 mission first. So an automatic reaction is, oh, I need as much fuel as I possibly can. Yeah. Instead of saying, okay, what's the longest trip that I might take? Yeah. And how much fuel will I need? And here in Africa, if we had to look at that, knowing it's got two standard 90, 90 tanks, litre tanks, I'm enough. going, it's more than enough. It's and enough. you can separate the fuel, so if you picked up a bag full of fuel and you hopefully haven't got both tanks contaminated, so you can manage the fuel yeah. as you can manage your water. Yeah. Our water tanks have got gauges in, so yeah. you can see exactly how much water is in the tanks, yeah. which is important. So managing water, managing fuel is important. Managing your comfort. So here's a here's the thing. I would like to be able to carry that 20 litre of extra fuel strapped down safely in the car. For I want I still want to do the Kanini River trip. But we we were a little short of fuel. Mm. The first time I went there in my G wagon, I was short of fuel and I had to cut it short and go and head south again to get fuel. I want to be able to go from Ipuo all the way down from Sales and then <laughs> get to the river. And knowing that I will have enough fuel to get not, home. Not stressing. And on so, 290s, yeah. it's borderline. I will, yeah. So, so it's, a, it's a very good um, sort of scenario, shall I say. Now, a lot of people go, okay, so I need that extra tank. So you're putting probably another expensive tank into the car, if you can fit it in, okay, at a great cost for probably one section of one trip you're going to do in 10 years, maybe. Maybe ever. Ever. Yeah. So if you said, if I said to you, well, you've got two spare wheels on the back, where would you ideally carry it? If you had a roof rack, you could put two cans up there, fill them up, drive your first 40 liters worth of fuel, dump that fuel in the tanks, and then you've actually got no weight on the roof. Okay. If you had a, the pop-up roof tent, we normally have a wood tray on there, while the tent's closed, you do it's a compromise. You're putting that weight on and you're going, you know what? When I've driven forty liters of fuel out of my tanks, I'm gonna empty those in, I can super siphon it in, yes. I don't need anything more than that. Yes. And I have these empty I can give them away to someone if I want to. Okay, I try not to put diesel inside because if it spills it's a mess. <laughs> but you know so, so, that said, it's so okay. that's your small compromise. Yeah. So to, for your solution there, I'm going, we're not going to add another tank. No, no, no. It's no. a waste of money no, and no. it's not going to... Completely. The right. same with water. If you said to me, you know, Paul, 100 litres, 120 litres, there's going to be a time where on one trip, well, you know, you get these bladders, actually the Swiss military bladders, mm. and they're brilliant. Take two of those. It's 40 litres. You could lie, lie two Swiss bladders in the back here, strap the same, them decant down. Decant them once the other tank's empty, left. just decant them and... Yeah. So when you can them. look at your, your mission... Yeah. Two months, you're looking at where you're traveling, okay, you're looking at how you're traveling, one, two people. You're looking at what are your actual needs for the car, okay, so, so you've already said, I, I don't cook a lot, so I want it simple and easy. I'm going to be by myself, I've been filming all day, driving all day, so I'm going to be tired, it's hot, it's 40 something degrees, I'm pretty depleted. So I need my camp to be as simple as possible, so if I can climb in the car and I can go to sleep, close the doors put a mosquito net down and I'm happy, it will leave the doors open with whatever you choose. It's simple. You can do that, wake up in the morning, had a good sleep, carry on, and your, your journey doesn't come, doesn't deplete you. It's a balance, it's like a scale. Yeah. Okay, when you're driving, yeah. you're trying to keep yourself balanced. <clears throat> Too much uh, strain, stress, pressure, difficult roads, not enough rest, the scale tips. I know, it's happened to me. I know. And then, and then we have... It's happened to all of us, really. You know, can have an accident, yeah. things go wrong, you're yeah. not focused, you've just shot this great piece and the mic wasn't on and you want to kill yourself for that. And that's the, that's the thing, so, so right. you've got to, <laughs> <laughs> you're not getting old are we? <laughs> so I think that's, that's the balance we look at. Now if you had to think what would be um, the, the absolute have to have, 
you've said hot water, you've said most of anything you can see that, that you go, hey, listen, I need to have that. I love my awning. Okay. Because it is so quick to put up and so quick to put away. And I use it so often because of that. Yeah, that's good. That's a good call. So if we put a roof rack on it. No, you want so my on. idea was because the roof is flat, not tilted, mm. it's now worth me putting some solar panels and dispense with solar blankets completely. Two solar mm. panels on my roof rack. Because if I've got a roof rack, I've got to, what am I putting on my roof rack? Firewood, the, yeah. the tent, yeah. nothing else. And, and I think when you're looking at that now, with your solar, because that's yeah. always a debate with people. Do I need a solar blanket I plug in? Do I need panels on the roof? What's my battery system going to be? In our design, we have two 100 amp hour lithium batteries. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm thinking exactly that, yeah. because I don't think I need more, because I'm not induction cooking, so I honestly don't need more. Exactly. And with, with the servo unit that we use, yeah. we actually have an SD card. We've been collecting data from all our clients who drive okay. troopies. And we're finding that actually they're not plugging their solar panels in because we don't fit the solar panels to the roof for most of them. Um, and of course, um, some of them use shore power, which is recommended every now and then to top the batteries up. But you know what? Some of them are just getting away with their driving. And that depends on how you travel. Yeah. So if you said, you know, Paul, and it's a question to ask, am I going to go and travel and stop for four or five days at a time? And I found this great tree I've parked underneath my shoes held. I want to go and drive my truck out under the sun to charge my batteries. Right, then you need a fold-out panel yeah. because that's how yeah. you camp, not you, yeah. that person. Yeah. Five days at a time, yeah. nice campsite. Nothing see, wrong with see, that. see here's, the, here's the thought. If I've got a big flat roof rack, what do I put on it? As I said, firewood, tent. I've, I don't need a great big roof rack for that. No, you don't. So you could have a smaller roof rack. Yeah, but the tent, oh, I'm the tent thinking is, about yes. the RV4, it's over two meters long. Yeah. Okay, so, so then, then you could I, support that with one roof bar. But, awning. Yeah. The so only way to put an awning with that strength, yes. you need a good roof you rack. You need a good roof rack, yeah. yeah. So I don't know how to get away with a good, strong, almost full-length roof rack if I want to do that with it. And then yeah. I'm saying, well, if I've got that roof rack, just, just permanently wire two solar panels, yeah. And I'll, even if I'm sitting uh, for two weeks in one place, if, unless I'm parked in the shade... <laughs> sure, but that's, I will that's going to be... And I think there's the question, is, is, you know, charging systems have improved massively. Batteries have improved massively. Yeah. So what we used to use, the you know, AGM battery and a solenoid system, has it's massively changed what we have now. We have much more capacity, yeah. much more... We've lengthened the no, totally, thing. Completely, so it's changed the game totally, completely. And totally. it's not wrong what you, the old stuff still works. You know, if you're doing a, a cheaper build and you're saying, you know what, I can use an AGM battery and a solenoid, you get their limitations to it. Yeah. Understand the limitations and yeah. work with it. Yeah. It's fine. What you've got here is you're going, is it wrong to put panels on? No, put the panels on. We'll collect the data. You come back from a few trips and you go, you know what, I'm just actually don't need it. Uh, well, but not wrong. Uh, to actually, fit. what's going to happen is the Dream Tour. I had, I think it was 320 watts of solar panel on the roof. I never plugged the DC DC charger in it. Uh, I did once, but that was actually I could have survived having no DC DC charger using only solar. But that was in Australia. Yeah. So, but that was what was happening, and I had 150 amp hour uh, b batteries. So only 150. I'm going to have 200 here. So you're going so to even you're going that to get was more. sufficient. And you're going to get more than that. And panels are very efficient. And you can choose a size of panel that fits the roof and go. You know what? I've got this space. I can put one or two. Whatever the configuration works. Because your first setup is going to have a ground tent, which you want to be able to take on and off easily. And think about if there's two of you, you've got to lift that up and put it up. So there's ways to have that. So look at where that's going to sit. And you're going to put two spare wheels in the back, so that takes that so, up. Good question. So, the tent, I've already experimented with it. I can put it up on my own, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Already tried it. Um, it wasn't quite as high as that, but I can do that. Two spare wheels, no. I don't want to carry two spare wheels. You want to carry one spare wheel? I want to carry one. <laughs> yeah. I'm carrying mud terrains, they're very strong. I. You know, it's, it's not again, so it's an that for me, it's, it's, it's like people say, oh, I recommend two, okay? But 
if you're confident, you understand the parameters of, of what you're doing, you've done it for many years, that's fine. It's all about managing well, risk and see, mitigating risk. When, when have I had two punctures mm. between the ability to be able to have the, have the tire replaced or repaired by taking it off? You know, because I've done it yeah, yeah, in the yeah, past, I've yeah, taken yeah, it off and it's yeah. not a picnic. Yeah. Okay. But with, um, I was going to say new, they're not new anymore. You can do a temporary repair. Yeah. So I had a tire destroyed. And then very soon afterwards, I think it was the following night, I had a puncture. So only time. So again, I had my spare, I was carrying, I was carrying two spares. Sure. I never went to my second spare. It's like an insurance policy. But having it was nice. Yeah, so it's exactly that. It's, it's, I, and, and I have this debate with people, and, and they, I think they'd mostly like me to say, no, just take one, it's fine. And I mean, then you can take one with pleasure. When you're in the middle of nowhere and you've used your spare and you've now got to go and drive somewhere to get a wheel, because you don't need two rooms, you just need a second spare carcass, it's fine, just a tire. Um, when you then have to go and drive somewhere because you've trashed a tire, and mind you, we, we reduce the risk massively by fitting like tire monitors on it, we drill two holes in the rims, and an extra hole, one tire valve for the valve and the other one for the tire monitoring system. So what you've got is you, you managing your risk in a bigger way, better way. It means with all your experience and all your driving, you say it's happened to me once. So on the law of averages, you're probably going to be okay. okay. That's an ex a risk you have to take on board. It's not a risk I take on board. I go, listen, I'll take one spare tire, just a tire, and I'll take a spare wheel. Because I've had four tires. Like we did on the canning. <laughs> like we did on the canning. So if I can do that, I'm going, oh, well, that's okay. That, that yeah. could work. It's not wrong. Whatever I, you do, I'm going to put one spare and for my trip to a poor and I know how. Paul, can you get me a spare tire? Really, really isn't terrible. Isn't there much terrain available? I will <laughs> strap one onto the roof. Uh, just to see, so, so that's, the carcass on the roof. that's great because you know that that road can eat tires. Yeah. You know that we've driven it. Yeah. So that's a harsh road. You okay, know what? I'm at more risk there. I'll just take a tire. Good enough. You might do another trip and going, you know what, I'm doing this, I can get help if I need it. All it's going to do is cost you time and money. Yeah, yeah. Okay? yeah. Now, if you've got time and, and you've got the cash to do it, you go, I don't need to carry that. Nothing wrong. Set it up before you go. That's I'm what doing I'm this trip. Do then. That's what Have I'm someone who can send you a tire. Say, I, if I call you, you DHL me a tire up or if we can't get it. It's fine. So it's, it's, a, it's about, again, understanding you've got your experience and mine. And we're looking and going, what are the choices we make? Now, we all take choices made on experience and the risk, amount of risk we can take. And that's what people are trying to manage. Okay, so, one wheel on that side. Yeah. On this side, I want some kind of flop down Fall where down. I can put a basin. Okay. Where that's I can put a basin. It's one of the things that I, I've never had a place, maybe ne never, but I like the idea of dropping in a plastic basin and actually having it there while I'm camping. And if I had the Max Trex uh, table and the rail on the side with a little drop-in basin next to it. Something like that. That could also work. That could also work. So, so I'm going to leave that up so, to you, so but that's, no, no, you exactly. understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Here's some space. I can put my extra fuel jerry can on my back wheel carrier. 20 liters, it's in the tank, I'm done. Yeah. I'm always you know, emptying my, my back tanks first anyway to get the weight forward. So, But again, I'm questioning it. whether you need that. No, yeah. So, okay. so you're saying... It's only on one trip. I know, maybe, so yeah. on the one trip. So I wouldn't fit the weight of the wheel carrier. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to actually look at um, getting the weight So you I wouldn't fit anything here to start. So with. one wheel carrier for one my spare. You can open this door without any hindrance. I like okay. that. I do like because that. Because your little basin will fit on the side with the two. We put two rails, two two rails on the side of the vehicle. Yeah. The Max Trex mounts to it, and there's space for a little fold-down basin type thing. Okay. Yeah. So that takes care of that because it's all there, and you like it. Okay. No problem. The fact that you can open and close this door, that's also it's actually okay. quite nice. It's Not easy. easy. Yeah. Um, some people want to access through the small door here. We choose not to do that because you lose too much storage space. So we haven't gone for that route. 
And if you're going to go in the vehicle, then open up both doors and go in. You're going to open up to both. Yeah, that's but that's just we've designed it around right. usable space. Usable right. space. Okay. If you came at one stage and said, you know what, I actually I need another spare. I'm going to do this trip, and I'm really worried about it. Well, you fit a wheel carrier bolt, drop straight do. in. You fit a wheel. It's an extra cost when you need it. Yeah. No stress. Yeah. You've got a roof rack. Yeah. You can carry a carcass up. Yeah. It's not a lot of weight. You know, you're not adding a lot of weight to your roof. You've got yeah. a, a tire without a rim. You're going to have a tent, yeah. and you're going to have a tray for some wood, which you're going to. Yeah. So actually, how you're using that works. And you're going. I can. I can get in and out. I can get what I need here. Um, you're comfortable with what you're taking. Yeah. And you're saying, okay, I've got some spares to carry. Yeah. I've got a repair kit, which is like the first <coughs> kit for the car. We've already spoken about that in our workshop. So spares kit, repair kit, your recovery equipment, which generally goes in this area behind the rear seat. So your yeah. driver's seat, flip forward, recovery bag, because it's something you need to get out. And if you want to get it, you want to access it without that having to open up the whole back. Yeah. Because that's critical. So yeah. safety critical. Yeah. I can get my jacking wheel kit out yeah. and get my recovery kit out, toe yeah. strap, whatever we need. Yeah. And then you've got so and then you've got your first aid kit and your tools. Okay. So again, shifting the heavy stuff where you can get the weight further forward, keep the light stuff at the back. If you're here and you want to get food, you've got a couple of drawers you want to access food without having to climb in the vehicle. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So can I open up, yes. get my food? Alright, I'm gonna store my food here. This is usable space. You'll see on some of the other models, we've actually got really nice molly plates up here and here. Yes. And we've got another I've seen one. The which, molly plates, they're very nice. Yeah, and it's got yeah. a side slide out um, cutting board there. So, what we're going is this is dead space. Some people like to look, you don't want to close the whole window up, so you can know, still have the light coming. So, again, thinking about what you need when you want to use something. Oh, I can grab that. <coughs> okay, I can use it. And you'll have a very clear idea of what you want. Someone who's never overlanded, it's guesswork, because they've never used a vehicle in camp to it. Mm. And that's where we feel having a solution that has been worked, tested, tried. Okay. And the response we've had is people go, oh, that's nice, you've done all yeah. the thinking. Yeah, yeah. Great. So, in terms of my vehicle, I love that mosquito net thing at the back here. That's a really, yeah. really so nice got little to. modification. We'll show that later. In fact, we can show it while you're building, while you're yeah. building my vehicle. But I don't want to cook here. Yes, I understand fine. I've got access to food and things here, but I want to cook yes, and that's under my fun. awning on that side. What I do like, and I see there's not one on this vehicle because there are no gull wings, but the side box. Now, I know it takes, a, it takes some a space, space. Here, mm. but actually it only takes about this much space, but it still needs this amount. And this is actually a little bit wider than the one I've got on my yeah. trippy. Yeah. So, so this yeah. is a good amount of space, but that, that gull wing open, yeah. boom, there's my kitchen right there, and I just pull out things and make myself coffee. No, and we, we have a module for Don't that. let me forget. <laughs> I want a travel place. buddy. The travel buddy, yeah. We fitted that in as well. I must have my travel buddy. I'll, I'll show you one where we put the travel buddy. Okay. It's actually a great bit of kit. <laughs> we, are, we are completely, I am completely So if I put the travel buddy in, I've ticked 80% of your boxes. It's the, let's go near the top. This is easy. Eh? Easy shower, <laughs> yeah. travel buddy. Honestly, it's that. Yeah, look, I try and explain this to people uh, look, and they don't understand when it. When they, when they use it, they yeah. go, how did we? <laughs> it's so good. So those little products, you know, as yeah. you've used your vehicle and done, and that's, that's where it's the benefit of people who haven't done this and go, Travel buddy, tell me how you use it. Explain it. Oh, that could be. It's nice. not just for pies. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so, 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 so what those, are my, those are my must haves. Now, here, critical. Yeah. You're going to work here. So, the important part yes. is your laptop size. I will. How you sit. Yes, and that because level. This space here that I t we, we take for your kitchen, if I make it 50 mil smaller or bigger, it's not the end of the world. But when we understand what you're going to put in the kitchen, you want to keep that as small as possible. Well, the one that I've got in my trophy is I actually wanted to remake it, rebuild it, and I started doing measurements and I came up with exactly the same measurements. <laughs> it actually is a very nice optimum yeah. size for the amount of space it takes up 
and what you're actually packing, packing on the outside yeah. and accessing from the outside. Yeah. And actually it works very well. And I would actually give, give those measurements. Because, yeah, well, that's great. But this, because as I was this saying, is wider than mine, yeah. which means I've got, because now in my current vehicle, it's okay for the laptop, but I'd like a little more. You, you've got more. Yeah. You've got more. So that's, so that's a key solved. thing to, to <clears> measure. For me, it's like, you know, sit there, put your laptop up there, what yep. are you working with? Have you got enough space around yep. you? Have you got plugs, points you need? Would you be able to do it? some kind of slide out table for me? Yeah, that's doable. That's not doable. Because that to me, again, even my current one, the height is right, that height is right, but I'm still leaning forward. And if I could... You know when you lean forward, it's, it's, it's something you know with my neck injury that I had. Every centimetre your neck goes forward. And I watch people and they sit there and their neck is for hyperextended forward. The pressure it puts on your, on your neck and then they come away and they go, oh, my neck's got this headache, feeling tight, shoulders are tight, tense. And I'm, I'm guilty of it as well at home, but I have a desk stand where I actually have my computer up on a desk stand, so I actually sit and work like this, and I can stand and sit. But this is where you get in a car, you drive for, how would I say, probably days, yeah. long hours, yeah. by yourself, sitting there, and I know when I'm on rallies and expeditions, this all gets tight. So yes. I'm very aware of my posture when I'm driving. But worse is when you can get out of your driving seat, which needs to be a good, comfortable seat. Now we'll do something about yeah. the seats. <coughs> we will. And you can actually then sit and go, now I've got to do four hours of editing. And you, you don't want that, because you're going to end up with a lot of fatigue. Yeah. And that's what, that's what I try and explain to people. Fatigue is a killer. When you've, I, I rolled and had my massive accident because I was fatigued, I was tired. So on my rallies now and trips when I'm driving, I'm going, am I fatigued? I check in. Am I actually fatigued? Am I, am I actually okay? And if I'm not, I need to do something about this. Sleep, rest, ask someone to drive, whatever. And that comes with experience. But if we can look at that and what you're doing and how you're living in and around this area, well, that's a little bonus. Yeah. Small thing. But it can if, be. If you could do that for me, I'd be hugely grateful. Because something that gives you a back massage. <coughs> <laughs> well, we can Gwyneth talk about that. Lady. We can talk about that as well. But that would be because I don't do a lot of editing for that reason. I do more now than I did before because it's better. But it's still I don't have a. Well, I'm you know, like this typically, and my back is curved like this, yeah. and I eventually and it I get to become a mess. Yeah. So if we had something here yeah, where your laptop actually was raised, so your screen was the right height, and you pulled something out, and you could sit with your keyboard and your mouse. Your screen is what kills yeah. you, because a laptop automatically right. puts you down. This. You're, you're, yeah. you're doing this kind of thing as opposed to just... So what needs to happen here is when you sit, if you can rest back and as something pulls out and you've got your edit table in front of you yeah. on your lap, yeah. resting back, yeah. and your screen is at the right height, yeah. we've solved your fatigue problem, yeah. which is what happens with most people. Let's do that. So yeah, we, Let's do that. Yeah. Okay. But those are the, So that's the detail that... Okay. The 10% I talk about that yes, we're going to yes, make yes, this yes, Andrew's yes. truck. Yes, okay. yes. It's not about all this. This is 90% going to work for you. And if the drawer was slightly different configuration, you know what? It works. We know tins will fit in this. We know you've got space for this. Um, but that is, is, is a very important part to get your workstation right. Yes. Because that gives you okay. more use out okay. of the interior of your vehicle. I think what I'd like to do now, because we, we're going to wrap this up, because I'm now, I'm now, I'm, I'm kind of at the situation now where I'm saying, uh, yeah, Paul's got it, and I can go. Honestly, mm. you've got it. Yeah. Okay. But you, it's understand. That important you understand. You understand. Yeah. Understand it. So um, there are a few bits. I wouldn't, I'm not sure if I'd do it like that. I'm saying to myself, no, 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 no. I'm saying no because I'm saying, oh, and there's definitely a reason why you did it that way. I'm going to leave it that way. So. You've got the picture. Yeah. How do we make a quick conversion now? I'm, I've arrived in the one of my first trips is going to be a solo trip through the Kalahari, and I'm going to go to the Mabusa Hubi, and there are lions everywhere. And I'm going to sleep on my own in the back, no roof conversion at this stage. This is going to be probably one of my first trips. Tell me how I convert the back there into a place where I can climb in and sleep. Can you show that to me mm, right yeah, now? Sure. So Andrew, you wanting to get in and sleep, Close the doors up. You need to really close the space. Here. So say I'm sitting here because I've arrived at a campsite. I'm trying yeah. to picture that. And I'm sitting here and I'm doing a few things and everything. And I say, okay, I'm going to go to sleep now. Yeah. Remember, I don't have the headroom. Sure. I have more headroom than that, yes, but I sure. don't have full headroom. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm now going to convert this into, I'm going to climb back out of the car, yeah. convert it, yeah. show me how in. that works. So we remember the level's important, so we've got the levels, and then literally we've got this bamboo board. And it drops in. Right. The cushion you were sitting on here, remember we have our cushions um, made up with slightly better quality foam and support and comfort, so it's I nice it's quality. a lot better actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put the something knees. in there. You know the pee in the mattress. Yes. <laughs> I'll leave a bolt in there. Uh, yes, okay. um, so here so you've got one, one piece here, identical piece, which is your backrest when you're sitting. Yes. The third one to cover that one, and the fourth one there. So two okay. individuals. So you can actually move those cushions around. So basically, you've got one big cushion mattress that all comes together. It'll be it'll Velcro joined together, so it doesn't pull apart. It's about you're a meter wide. Maybe 900? Yeah, yeah, I'd say a good meter. Um, it's comfortable it's enough comfortable because if enough. you're going in here, you've got a bit more enough. width. Okay. You've got your fridge. Can I make a suggestion to this design? Hmm. It's a little tweak. A little tweak. A little tweak. Yeah. <laughs> I'm now, I've now climbed up there. I'm on my mattress and I've still got my shoes on. There's not enough space to drop my shoes down here before I go into bed. And you want to put them up here or in a bag? Uh, your no, shoes are probably dirty. They're dirty. <laughs> so that's just fine. a thought. That could be, that could be just made a thought. Show, small bit smaller. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. the reason why I say it, because with my current uh, vehicle, I've got this, this orifice in the side of the packing unit, and I kick off my shoes and I poke them in there. Poke them in there. And they're gone. They're out of the way. I don't mm. tread on them, and they don't make anything dirty. Yeah, but that's easy. So yeah. that was a nice Again, little about thing the, that we the, managed to. The length of this, up. and if you go, you yeah. know what, Paul? Happy enough if you just even if you cut that hole out and I could push my shoes through there, the mattress it's, still supports it. It's probably that's that's yeah, probably sufficient. I'm just saying yeah. I can and, I'm trying know, to visualize myself in it. Okay. Paul, you should have made a little hole here for my shoes. <laughs> I'm just trying to be, I'm trying to see ahead. So again, you know, in a little fact, a little in fact there's a hole there. There's a hole there, yeah. You could use that as well. Anyway, that's just a thought. But it's so not again, you know, critical. little things like that is like mm. Would we change this? Could we? Could you work around it? So mm. I go, yeah, there's nothing wrong. You could modify that, or you could put them in a bag, or you could drop them through that space there. Yeah. So yeah. you've got options. Yeah. But as you say, when you get up, you want to open the doors. You yeah. want to kick it out. You want to yeah. be sitting. Yeah. Of course, take this, drop it. No, that's fantastic. The fact that it hasn't taken no, out look, any room is it's, fantastic. It's really fantastic. well designed. And yeah. um, so the the cushion that is there remains there, and the cushion that is here is actually the backrest. The back rest, yeah. And those two cushions? No, those two cushions stay. And if you don't need them, you can bolster because you've okay. got a, you know a window here. You might put one and another one to make it right. more comfortable. Okay. If you don't need them, some people don't take them at all. They just have the cushion for one size to sleep right. here. Right. But I think having the bed through. Yeah. will give you a better night's yeah. sleep. And again, if you don't sleep properly, you don't function the next day. Yeah, I know, absolutely. And true. hey, listen, Andrew on a little sleep, Paul on a little sleep, not a good thing. <laughs>